This is an interesting topic, and I don't really know the angle that I want to explore when discussing it. Mostly because this thing, depending on who you ask, is either not an issue at all, or it is somewhat of an issue that in which we are not hearing the truth about. We're going over to the Vancouver Canucks and talking about two of the top players on the team, Elias Pettersson, Super Swede, and JT Miller, American Sniper. Because when it comes to the dynamic between these two guys, there have been more clips than one circulating around social media the past few months talking about these two and kind of highlighting the differences between how they react to things and how they perceive things on the ice and whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing. And then you had yourselves the Elias Pettersson interview on 32 Thoughts that kind of sparked this idea up even more. It's weird, and that's why I said this video topic is weird. I don't really know the proper way to go about this, but let's just start out by going over both of these guys, what they've done so far in the season, and their demeanors out there on the ice. Because right now, we had ourselves the Canucks leadership post the Twitter thing where they talked about who's going to be on their leadership crew now that Captain Bo Horvat is gone. The Canucks, as announced yesterday, are going to have three alternate captains per game, and they will be rotating amongst a group of four players, OEL, PD, Quinn Hughes, and JT. You could talk about how, hey, Tanner Pearson's not there. Hey, Tyler Meyer's not there. That's okay. But PD and Miller are indeed there. And when it comes to the leadership styles or the leadership qualities that both of these guys bring to the ice, you can definitely see the difference. Now, before we go over to that, let's just look at points first and foremost, introduce the topic pretty fluidly over here. JT Miller this season has 45 points in 50 games played. Now, that's a number that a lot of Canucks fans would say is pretty disappointing considering the contract and how Miller was producing at 99 points last year, but honestly, I mean, look, 45 divvy 50 multiplied up by 82, that is not a terrible number. He's on pace for 73 points at the very least. A guy making $8 million getting 70 points is not the end of the world. And I do think it's kind of interesting how Miller has performed in somewhat of a disappointing capacity while still being able to produce the amount of numbers that he has been. Meanwhile, you have Elias Pettersson, 59 points in 48 games played. Do the math, over 82, and PD has a 101-point pace season so far. It's incredible. Now, there are some other names thrown in there too, Andre Kuzmenko, Quinn Hughes, Brock Besser, etc., etc., and then of course Bo Horvat, but for right now, Elias Pettersson is the better point producer than JT. And you would also find that on the ice, just in terms of how these guys are playing, Petey's playing a lot better just in general. I mean, there was a Twitter post here made by Mike Kelly, who works with the NHL Network, and he did his mid-season awards just two days ago. He said that Pedersen would be the first runner-up for the Selkie behind Patrice Bergeron, which is... Pretty good, if I do say so myself. Miller, on the other hand, does not play well defensively. We know his back checking is lazy. We know his in-defensive zone pressure is non-existent. He just stands there, especially on the penalty kill. You saw that yesterday against the New Jersey Devils. But when it comes to the way these guys are leaders, you could say that for Elias Pettersson, he's more of the quiet type. Bo Horvat said that Petey would be his pick in trying to name the next captain of the Vancouver Canucks. Petey is a determined individual. He goes out there and he tries to win. And you could see just the work ethic that he displays every shift. It's infectious. It bleeds into the rest of the lineup. It makes you want to go out there and do things to the same hype level and determination level that Petey goes out there and does things. Meanwhile, for JT, he's a lot more of a vocal leader. He goes out there and talks the talk. He walks the walk sometimes. I mean, last season he got 99 points, but more often than not, you'll see JT expressing his desire to win through his anger. He gets angry quite easily, and he goes out there and bangs his stick, he yells at the referees, he yells just in general. That was a really big problem last season that we had seen, where Miller would lose his temper and go to the bench just screaming and swearing, and the cameras would pick it up, and you'd see the replays going out there showing that he's banging his stick against the bench and breaking it in two. This is not necessarily a problem, 
but it is different. And we had ourselves a few clips thrown out there the past few months where you would find Elias Pedersen giving a little bit of a side eye to Miller, or at least that's what it looks like. There was a clip of Petey kind of pretending to bang his stick, and some people were saying, oh, he's mimicking JT. All of this, of course, is speculation. It's not like this actually happened. It's just based off of what the cameras picked up, that's what kind of looks like happened. Anyways, we had ourselves an interview done with Elias Pettersson on the 32 Thoughts podcast with Elliot Friedman during the All-Star break. And there was a video attached to this where you could see Friedman and Merrick kind of talking to Petey while he's chilling on the beach in a chair. It's kind of funny, but either way, there was a little segment in the audio where Friedman asks Petey about Miller. Now, we're going over on VancouverIsAwesome.com. Daniel Wagner went out there and transcribed the audio and wrote it out here so I could screenshot it, put it on the screen for you, for all of us to read here. During the interview, Elliot Friedman brought up J.T. Miller and whether he and Pedersen have a good relationship. Pedersen said, It's good. I mean, we've had our differences, maybe, in some games, but he's a teammate that I respect. He's someone I like to play hockey with. There's a lot of speculation, obviously, a lot, but he's a teammate I respect. It's not an issue. Asked to describe JT, Pedersen said he wants to win so bad, and sometimes he maybe gets too hot-headed, if that's the right word. He cares a lot and just wants to win. Now, I read that little snippet in... I'm just going to admit it. A pretty good way. I think I did a good job when reading that. But if you listen to the audio itself, Pedersen's description of JT definitely is not as fluid and straightforward as that. There are a lot of pauses, and he sort of sounds a bit hesitant when going out there and saying the things that he says. Now, verbatim, just word for word, it's a pretty good answer. Saying, no, not an issue. Sure, he gets hot-headed, but he's a teammate I respect. I like playing with him. It's not an issue. But when you listen to the interview, there are a lot of people on Canucks Twitter, for example, going out there and saying, come on, you can't actually believe what he's saying. Like, listen to how he's saying it. He doesn't sound convinced himself that that's the case. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say specifically that it's a lie or just facetious, putting on a front for the media, whatever. But like, you know, this is sort of what you have to do if you're going to be captain in training sort of material. You saw Bo Horvat. He was always a great talker to the media. You never got a headline out of Bo. And that was probably the best part about him being the captain of the Vancouver Canucks, because even though there was so much turmoil, so much crap going on with this team over the years, you never got yourselves a Bo Horvat quote that turned it into a bigger deal. He always was the most vanilla, just straightforward, no BS type of answers, you say what you need to hear type of guy out there. And for Elias Pettersson, we all kind of remember when he came into the league, there was a lot of personality shown in there through his interviews. The death stare, the blunt answers and everything. Sure, there's media training done by the Vancouver Canucks. There's media training done by every NHL team. And that sort of took away a lot of the flair that Elias Pettersson had in these interviews. But it sort of smoothened him out into becoming a more leadership type, Bo Horvat answering type of guy. Now, Petey doesn't have that talent naturally, so you could definitely see that there's a lot more processing in his mind that goes through whenever he does have a question to answer that's a little difficult. Like, hey, is your relationship with JT good? Like, he has a lot of pauses in that answer. So, I could definitely understand both points of views, like Miller going out there and doing all the things that he's been doing, Petey responding maybe a little bit scoffishly at it. You could see some clips out there where he kind of gives a bit of a side eye when Miller's having a tantrum on the bench, but at the end of the day, none of that stuff is really confirmed, you know? You can never say that Petey is for sure doing that because maybe he's looking at something else. Who really knows? There's always the benefit of the doubt. But the cameras do pick up on these things once in a while, and I just thought it was interesting how the Friedman podcast went out there and specifically called it out and asked Pedersen himself, hey, like, are you good with Miller? Like, is this a good relationship you guys have? At the end of the day, though, despite what you want to believe, Pedersen did say it was good, and therefore, I feel like that's all we can really do. Take this at face value and move on. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the JT Miller question to PD on 32 Thoughts. Do you think it's a big deal, the way PD answered it? Or do you think we should be just focusing on the words instead? Music versus lyrics over here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.